G'day guys and girls, today we're gonna to head out and photograph the Milky Way, but with a Billy basic kit lens, proving that anyone can capture the images of the Milky Way in their photography. So let's get into it and roll that intro. G'day guys and girls, and thank you for joining me and this random cat in Slovenia to photograph the Milky Way. But a little bit of a twist, the Billy Basic kit lens proven that anyone can capture images of the Milky Way with the camera gear that they already own. But if you're new to this channel, I'm Matthew Storer, a travel and landscape photographer from Australia, traveling to least explored countries, showcasing the beauty and diversity from around this world through my photography on this YouTube channel. So if that interests you, please drop below and subscribe for future content. But right now we've come to a place called Creta Lake. It basically translates to Chalk Lake in English. It's a beautiful location, it's frozen over. We've got about half an hour until the Milky Way passes over the correct place we want to catch the photograph. So today we're going to go through some really basic pre-planning tips on how to know where to go at what time to capture the image of the Milky Way, some basic settings on how to catch the Milky Way with your standard camera and kit lens, just some tips and tricks. So basically showing that anyone can head out and capture that image that they've always dreamt of of the Milky Way with a standard, inexpensive kit lens. Radio, so we've made it to the location. Never would I thought I'd be standing on a frozen lake growing up in Australia, one of the hottest places in the world. But here I am, minus seven, about to photograph the Milky Way. But kit lens, the Fujifilm kit lens 18 to 55. It's a 2.8 to f4. Tonight I'm gonna to be concentrating on getting the image with a kit lens. So we're gonna keep it on 2.8, I'm gonna keep it wide open at 18 mil and concentrate on our shutter speed and our ISO settings to capture the image. But before we even head out, so a tripod, camera, and lens up. There's many things we can do back home in the warmth to location scout, get the correct timing before we even get here. The first one is a pro tip. If you can come to this location and find a foreground element before you even get here, this will be absolutely perfect and save you so much time in the cold or walk around with the head torch on trying to find a composition in the foreground. The second one is we need clear skies. So check about two or three days in the forecast to make sure you're gonna get clear skies around that new moon. So I'm about three days away from a new moon, but it's set about two or three hours ago, so it's completely pitch black skies. But to save all this time, you can jump on an app called Photo Pills. I talk about this app through and through because you can jump on, go to Creed Lake where I am right now, and it gives you an exact time, 8.36, when the Milky Way is heading north to south. It saves me so much time, so much hassle, getting out here and waiting for the Milky Way if I haven't got the correct time. Also, it turns up the top if there's a new moon or not. So right now, really good conditions. But secondly, on that app, you can find out what shutter speed you can use for your cameras. So I said 18 mil. There is a simple, 500 rule, it's called 500 divided by the focal range times by your crop sensor, so 1.5 for me. But this isn't really accurate. It gives me 18 seconds, but on photo pills, it gives you more of a precise time with the new cameras. So tonight I was doing the X-T3, so I'm getting about 11, 10 or 11 seconds out of this camera if I want to print these images. So all this can be done before we even get here in the freezing conditions. Let's get our camera set up now and start taking some images, what we're really here for. Right here, so I'm all set up, and there's three things that I guarantee that you need when going out and taking images of the Milky Way. A tripod, a camera, and a lens. A basic kit lens proven that anyone can take images of the night sky. There's one thing I do recommend also, it is a head torch. It is a head torch with a red setting. This mainly is because once you're walking around trying to find foreground elements, and you've got a bright light like I am using right now, I look up, 
and can't see diddly squat of the night sky. We're going to the head torch that's red. It doesn't affect your eyes and you can see all the foreground elements trying to find a foreground setting or whatever it is to be. Back of the camera setting and doesn't hurt your eyes. So absolutely fantastic and a big recommendation that I recommend. Now, I've said I'm using the XF 8 to 55, 2.8 to f4. So whatever your lens is, use the widest aperture, so 2.8 for me at the lowest focal range, 18 mil. So if yours is 15 mil at 3.5, use 15 mil at 3.5, okay? So that will not change throughout the whole duration of the two images we're about to capture on this vlog. But once we turn the camera on, there's a few settings I wanna go through and talk about. The first one, and sometimes overlooked, is white balance. For me, I can set a Kelvin temperature, a custom Kelvin temperature on my camera. So I go through and shoot around 3,800 to 4,500 on the custom setting. If your camera doesn't have a custom setting, that is fine. Just choose the best possible preset that suits this image. So take a few images and change them around and see what suits you. Usually around that daylight would be better. The second one I want to talk about is shooting in RAW. Another thing I said on my seven tips, and I wish I knew as a beginner, do not shoot on JPEG. Please, please, please shoot on RAW. Therefore, if you can't get a custom Kelvin temperature, if we can go back into Lightroom and adjust all the colors that we want because it's not embedded into the JPEG image. Therefore, I'm going to go through, as I said, 2.8, 18mm is locked down. We want to go through and do a 6,400 ISO I'm going to start on. This is going to be my base setting. And then we've already went through and worked out on photo pills. I can do the 500 rule at 18 seconds or the new camera equation gets me to 11.22. So we're going to go through and do a few images at 10 seconds, 13 seconds, 15. But right now I'm going to take an image on 13 seconds to see how it goes. There's one big Standout factor that I want to talk about before we get any of these images in camera. That is focusing. The one thing that no Lightroom, no Photoshop can fix. No one can fix this, but only you can stuff it up. So I'm using a basic kit lens that has no markings on it whatsoever. So how do I know where infinity is? It's pitch black, what am I going to do? I'm gonna work this out before I even get to this location. I wanna go out during the day, find something in the far, far distance, focus on it, zoom in on the back of my camera, and put, for me, I've got no markings, it's a cheap lens. I've put some sticky tape that I can peel off when I get home or tomorrow morning. But I've just put it on here, focus to infinity, and put a cut through so I can still move the focusing ring. But I know once I get out here, everything is done. It's minus seven, my hands are absolutely bitterly cold. I can just move this around, I'm in focus. It saved me so much of hassling, which is absolutely perfect. This is all part of a 12 part series I wanna do. I've booked a trip to Scotland, and I wanna take you guys through a beginner, amateur, and some professional part of how to photograph the night sky. It's a series that I have a huge passion for and I wanna take you guys through. So two things, let me know in the comments below if that is something you are interested in, a 12 part series on capturing the night sky from beginners, amateur, and some professional tips on expanding your night sky and photography and capturing images that you've always dreamt of capturing. Secondly, let me know in the comments below what you wanna know, what is it you wanna learn? Is it how to focus, focusing during the day, focusing at night, focus stacking night, these are all things that I want to take you through on a 12 part series in Scotland. I'm super pumped about it. I hope you are. And if you are and you're not subscribed, please subscribe for that series. It's going to be an absolute banger. Rightio, so I've locked in the settings there at 10 seconds, f2.8 and 6400 ISO. What we're going to go through now is go through and take a base image. So we're going to put a two second timer, remember, and take that image. That's the image you're looking at right now, because right from this point forward, we want to focus on just three things. Those things are composition, focusing, and making sure our subject matter or the Milky Way is in our composition. So the first one of composition, obviously it's a very difficult aspect to try and knuckle down whilst we're here, because everything is pitch black. She's dark as dog's guts right now. So I want to make sure I've got the lake in the foreground in the mid-ground, the dead trees just there, and then in the far, far background, the mountains. So my golden rule for this is one third or less, I wanna be foreground or subject matter. The rest of the image, 
I want to be looking up at the night sky, catching that beautiful Milky Way. That's why I help when it, I personally find it helps if I put it in vertical in a single image to capture this all in frame. It just lends itself perfectly to the Milky Way, obviously. She's running north to south right now. So that's the thing I'm looking for first. The second one is focusing. If it's not in focus, pack it up, mate, and throw it in the rubbish bin. It's no good. You can't fix it once you get home. So you need to make sure right now it's in focus. So if it takes four, 10 images to get in focus, take four, 10 images, take 20 to make sure it is in focus. It's so crucial. Then the third one, the subject matter or the Milky Way, we're making sure that it's lining up in our vertical composition as we just spoke about to make sure it's gonna be in the bloody frame. That's what we're out here for, to catch that Milky Way to make sure it's in the frame. But right now, what I'm gonna go through and do is take an image at 10 seconds, 13 seconds, 15 and 20 seconds. The reason behind that is we've worked out with the NFT rule and also the 500 rule, we can strip between 11.22 seconds and between 20 seconds. The reason I'm changing this up is because we don't want to change 2.8. We certainly don't want to change our focal range. 6,400 ISO, we want to change that shutter speed because the longer it's open, the more it sucks in the light, which is what we're after. The more light, the better. But sometimes too much light isn't any good. I'm going to explain to you why after I do this. So just finishing up those four images now. 10 seconds, 13, 15, and 20 seconds. You're probably thinking, why is he bloody taking four images just changing one thing? It's a great question, that's what I'm here to answer. Before we went out and worked our NFT and our 500 rule, went from 11 to 18 seconds. What this is doing is letting more light in, but more light isn't always perfect because we might let it open too long, we might get star movement. So when we punch up to 100%, we might get that little star movement. So here's the four images I captured on the screen right now. When you look at them at normal percentage, you know, 25%, it doesn't really make an effect. But when you jump up to 100% on the 20 second image, you can see that star movement. So right now, we cannot use 20 seconds. We have to jump back to the 15 seconds and check that. It's okay, but for me, I've worked out 13 seconds for this setup. The X-T3 and the 8 55 works perfectly. This is what I recommend everyone to do when they head out for the first time. Get as many images as you can. So whether it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds, working out your golden shutter speed rule, the 500 rule, whatever it is. If you don't know what it is, comment below on your camera and also your lens setup and I can let you know, I can help you out. You wanna capture as many shutter speed around this focal length because you wanna push it to the maximum you can, take it back just a little bit to get that star movement away out of the image. And you're gonna do the same for this with the ISO. So for me, I know the ISO on my camera works best between 3200 and 6400. But because I said she's pitch black tonight, we have to shoot at 6400, putting a little bit of noise into the image. So we've captured that image now. You know, it's not bad. We know 13 seconds, 2.8, 6400 ISO works best for us. But it's pretty bloody boring. You know, it's pretty Billy basic. So how can we improve this? We're gonna improve it. We're gonna walk out into the image with our head torch, our number four thing that we've purchased, and stand in the image because we can relate to the image when there's a human element in there, how big, how small it is, whatever it is, and adding that artificial light, I don't know, I think it's a pretty cool thing. Let's go out now and take this image with me standing in there and see what it looks like. So there you have that image guys. If you cannot find some subject matter or foreground interest that you want to photograph, you be it, head out. That fourth thing that I recommended to purchase, head out and you be the subject matter, giving scale, that artificial light, looking up, shining bright like a diamond with the Milky Way in the background, absolutely perfect. But guys, in the comments below, remember, please let me know what you would like to learn from this 12 stage, beginner, amateur, to some professional tips on how to capture the Milky Way. You can help me, and then with my professional skills behind the camera, I can give back to you on YouTube. In three months time, if you contact me, Matt, look what I've captured from this series that you've made on YouTube. This would be like a dream come true for me. I'd absolutely really, really love it. But guys, my question to you today is, when will you be heading out 
to learn how to capture the Milky Way. If you have any more questions on tonight's episode, let me know in the comments below, or if you want to email me directly, head to my website and email me. I'll get in contact back with you and give you all the information that you need to capture the Milky Way. Also, head to my Facebook page. It's going to be a photo with me at the tent and the Milky Way in the background, and in the comments section, post your best Milky Way image. I'm super keen to see where it was to and what setup you used. Guys, I love this sort of photography, so please help me out in the comments below on what you would love to learn. But it's minus seven. I'm almost frozen to this lake. I'm gonna get home, have some tea, warm up. But guys, that is me done for today. Super pumped for Scotland. It is three months until the Milky Way season finally arrives and we're gonna smash it this year in 2020. But guys, that is me done for today. If you love this content, please like, subscribe, share, or the workshops for Scotland, Slovenia, Norway are all in the links in the description. But guys, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao. Let's go, pussycat. Come on, cat. I know you're cold, but we have to get taken images.